It's the midweek frenzy edition of The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And it's time for us to take a look at some major headlines and some national dailies this morning. And after that, we'll be joined by Tunde Kolawole, a legal practitioner, to dissect some of these headlines on Off the Press. We'll begin with the Nation's newspaper. The Nation newspaper leads with National Assembly, Apabio Abbas, rally lawmakers for support. The writer there... House Speaker, Deputy Speaker, Candidate, Visit President-Elect. Another writer, Senate President, Candidate, Widen, Support Base. And Northern, not Central Senators, Protest Zones, Neglect. All right. Petrol subsidy pushing Nigeria to bankruptcy. Sanusi wants. You find details of that on page 5. Buhari Tunubu congratulate Adelike. Details of that on page 28 of the Nation newspaper. Monetary policy alone can't reset economy, says the CBN. Non-oil sector critical to recovery. Well, details of that is right on the front page, but uh, it continues on the inside of that. That's uh, page 6. Well, that's the much I'll be taking from the nation's newspaper. Yeah, um, but uh, uh, there's also PDP governors begin move to reconcile article with Wiki, Makende, and others. It's like taking paracetamol <laughs> after you're dead. Okay, well, um, Nature News is next. Um, the Nature News begins with or leads with water bill. Minister blames misinformation for non-passage says 96% already in existence. That's on page three. Um, so me, that means the provisions of the bill have already been in existence without the passing of the bill. Okay. Green shipping uh, Mars orders 19 low carbon ships. Okay. Will penalize shipping companies exporting on the undocumented cargoes. That's the CBN. You find that on page 11. Um, Expert, expect three days of heavy rains in FCT, Kaduna, 10 other states, Nimet warns. And then there's this interesting one, logging. Jigawa bans tree felling for firewood, charcoal. Okay, those are the headlines we intend to take from uh, the Nature News. All right, so from the Nature News, we go to the Guardian newspaper, which is leading with a made 168% tariff hike in eight years. Nigerians pay premium for unavailable electricity. Details of that you'll find on page four of the Guardian newspaper. Beavers to the rescue. Supreme Court affirms Adelike Ocean Governor. Details of that will be found on page four of that. Outrage over abduction, forceful conversion of 14-year-old Esther to Islam in Kaduna. Well, that's on Metro page. On, on Metro, you find that on page 8 of the Guardian newspaper. Well, concerns over electricity generation as terrorists eye national infrastructure. Details of that on page 6 of the nation's newspaper. All right, that's the much I'll be taking from The Guardian. Thank okay, you, The Pardon. Punch newspaper is next. Uh, the Punch begins or leads with a presidential poll, tribunal to consider PDP LP's live broadcast request. That would be nice. The writer is broadcasting proceedings live is of national importance, Atiku's legal team, LP insist. And then Justice Tsunami promises, uh, oh, <laughs> not Tsunami, Justice Samani promises speedy treatment of demand. APC vows appropriate response. Uh, we have also speaker, five aggrieved aspirants team up against Abbas. That is on page seven. Or Tedola fumes over Transcorp deal, Elumelu keeps mum. Uh, that is uh, on page 31. Uh, over $200 billion national asset lost to terrorism. That's federal government on page 42. Um, then uh, 15 die in Sokoto boat accident, 25 missing. You find that on page 8. Um, finally, final victory, Buhari Tinubu congratulate Adeleke supporters jubilate. Um, Lagos, uh, federal government orders private jets removal from Abuja airport. 
uh, those were the headlines, or those are the headlines we're taking from the Punch this morning. All right, so we have our guest, Tunde Kolawole, uh, a legal practitioner, ready to join us right now to discuss some of these headlines. Hello, Tunde. Good morning to you. Yes, um, thank you. Good morning, my sister. How are you today? I'm good. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's look at the story from Ocean State. Final victory. Okay. Buhari Tunubu congratulate Adeleke supporters jubilate. Give us your take on this. How do you respond to this victory given to Adeleke? Well, I want to say that um, I'm impressed by uh, the response of the president elect, Ashiwa Jubola Amir Tunubu, and also that of the president for the prompt manner in which they congratulated uh, Adeleke. It would appear to me from their response that uh, those two people are now behaving or uh, have behaved like a great uh, statement. Particularly President Buhari, he has all the wherewithal in terms of uh, the coercive machinery of the state to really manipulate the elections and all that. But it would appear that uh, he has refrained or has gained from that gain that kind of a thing. If some other politicians, if the most prominent politicians in this country, would have the same attitude like he has had, I think we'll begin to have a fair and fair election in Nigeria. And so, Governor Adeleke, but I think we should congratulate him. It has been a hard effort for victory. And you will remember, he first contested the first time, and it was alleged that he finally won that election, and that the elections in the way was uh, uh, manipulated. But we as lawyers will not say that, in the sense that at least he went to the election petition tribunal, and the election petition tribunal affirmed that uh, it was a former governor of the that won that uh, election. And uh, you also remember, there was nothing that could be thrown at, the, at anybody that uh, the APC didn't throw at Governor Adeliki to make sure that he doesn't really become a governor in the state from certificate cancer to uh, uh, Oambe, uh, caricature, and all manner of uh, something, uh, harassment, intimidation, and all that. At the end of the day, he has won um, at the, the tribunal. Uh, the takeaway for me from this is that uh, the Oshun's people have spoken, and that the courts have also affirmed what the Ocean State people have said. And uh, they have said that uh, no matter what shortcomings the uh, Adelike may have, he is the person they want as their governor. Yeah. If that is the case, I would want to suggest that we might need to amend the Nigerian constitution, which prescribes that a minimum a certificate that some of these politicians should have before they can contest or aspire to occupy any of these uh, uh, offices. Certificate doesn't really make a man. I know of so many people who never went to school, but they write good English, they speak good English, and whatever. Perhaps we should just say that uh, anybody contesting election should be able to read, write, and uh, understand the Nigerian official language, which is the English uh, language. Once you are able to do that and all that, they should be eligible to contest um, uh, the election. Okay. For well, Governor well, Yetola, well, he has my sympathy. I have met him about three occasions and all that. And I've also had uh, people who are very close to me who have worked there under him. That man is diligent. He is very prudent. He is very intelligent. He is also a humanist. He is somebody that has very late. The people of, of Australia would not have rejected uh, for Governor Peleke in any circumstances, in terms of his experience, in terms of his qualification, in terms of his facility as, um, as an administrator. Okay. I suspect that the uh, Yotola has paid for the price or the sins of his uh, predecessor. Because you will remember, uh, when Governor Raoul Paris left office, he left a mountain of debt, just like uh, President Buhari is leaving. He also left so many uh, civil servants, servant salary uh, on paid. He uh, promised to deliver on an airport which contract was awarded. The airport has not been constructed uh, up to now. And uh, 
what he simply did was also to import the developmental model of local state into Oslo state. And he started implementing that in Oslo state, like mega schools, uh, ICC centers, and other. Whereas the environment are totally different. Lagos is cosmopolitan. There are no more land to build schools and all that. We also remember we introduced one single so then, uniform, you know, yeah, which all the schools have to start wearing. Yeah. It was also under the Upper Lagos the religious fundamentalism in terms of uh, uh, religious uh, uh, skirmishes uh, began Tunde, to rise in the Oshun state. Yeah. So, yeah, Mr. Tunde, time will not allow us to, you know, dig deeper into this matter. But let's let's talk about briefly, uh, just in, in in a sentence or two, uh, some of the things, the judgment, you know, by the Supreme Court over this matter. And one of them is that transmission of results via beavers is not the only way to declare a result. How how did that strike you when you read it or when you heard it? Well, ordinarily. I do not agree with the Supreme Court with regards to that. Why do I say that? We remember, last week when we were discussing some of these issues, I suggested that uh, there are three sources of uh, law, the Constitution, the Electoral Act, and the INEC regulations and guidelines. I would want to uh, I mean, say that BIMAS was made a uh, that can pass or was in, uh, included in the INEC uh, rules and guidelines. And then I think also in the electoral act, which says that uh, you can transmit results via the electronic uh, medium. So if that is uh, part and parcel of our law, the Supreme Court not to say that uh, uh, it is not uh, mandatory that you should transmit the results through Bible or that you use a Bible. If the argument has been that there was a first major which made it impossible for INEC to use the Bible to uh, kind of um, upload the election and also transmit the election results. That would be understandable. But that argument will not work in the sense that at least the National Assembly elections that are contested, I mean, that were done at that period in time, I mean, with the presidential elections and what happened. Some of those songs were transmitted through the Bible. So, if you did it with Bible for the National Assembly election, why would we not do it uh, for the presidential election? I'm just saying that uh, uh, with regards to the Ohio State election, if Bible is part and parcel of our law, the court ought not to have said that it is not compulsory that you transmit the results uh, with a Bible. Uh, all over the world today, technology is the in thing. That is the coordinating thing. If it was because we were failing manually in the collation of uh, results, in uh, conducting election, uh, elections in this country, that was when we began to introduce technology and adopt technology into some of these things. <laughs> Why would we not begin to blow hot and cold all at the same time? So okay. with that, I do not agree with the Supreme Court. Okay. But the vision of the Supreme Court is uh, supreme. The, the only appeal you could make is to God who abides in heaven. Okay, uh, well, um, some conspiracy theories have been that they're setting a president to make uh, a leeway for the kind of judgment that we'll have in uh, uh, the presidential elections. But um, there will be no time to answer that. Uh, there is this consideration, yeah. tribunal to consider PDP LP's live broadcast request. Uh, so there's been that request that the, the proceedings should be broadcast live. Some people have kicked against it. Some people have said it's for national interest, for the transparency that comes with that. What's your response to it? When I want to align myself with the call that uh, the tribunal's proceedings should be broadcast uh, live, when you look at our law and the law that established all our courts and some of these tribunals and all that, it says that uh, any time a court is sitting, a tribunal is sitting, all its doors must be thrown open for people to come in and out. And why does the law say that? The law wants to see transparency in whatever is done in our court of law and in some of these tribunals and all that. If the Nigerian people or the parties that are involved in this election petition and all that, like the PDP, the Labour Party and what have you, are calling for the uh, tribunals and uh, sitting to be broadcast alive and all that. 
I don't think there is anything wrong with it. It will further help to ensure that we have transparency, not just in the proceedings, but also whatever rulings and decisions that the election president for the presidency might come up uh, at the end of the day. It shouldn't even be the major position they know. There are some other um, uh, things before the court, and then before some of these uh, tribunals, that ordinarily should go on uh, night. Just to give the Nigerian people the assurance that no uh, under the table transactions will be done with respect to some of these things. And you know the major position are very, very sensitive. So whatever is going to confirm more legality, more acceptability into the sittings of that tribunal, I am all for it. And I think broadcasting the sittings of that petition tribunal on a daily basis like would help to instill some transparency and then give the Nigerian people that justice is not, not just into the door, but that it's in fact has been done without care or favor. Well, I believe by Thursday we'll be knowing for sure if the court is going to grant, grant that request. Mm -hmm. Well, we do not have any more time to continue without the press, unfortunately. But Tunde Kolawale, thank you so much for your time and insight on these topics we've raised with you this morning. Thanks. Thanks for having me. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We'll continue now with our first hot topic after this break. Stay with us. <laughs>